We have three ground squirrels that are pretty typical in Minnesota. Um, the Richardsons is on the on this side here. Uh, the Franklins in the middle, and then the 13 line ground squirrel uh, is is the, or the stripy gopher that most people think of when they when the gophers. Um, these two do not have much of a concern for homeowners. Most people don't have Richardsons or Franklins ground squirrels in their landscape, but the the striped gopher or the 13 line ground squirrel, he's everywhere, and they're prolific and they make lots of tunnels, and if you're in the right environment, uh, I, I hear lots of complaints about uh, stripey gophers. And, and I am prohibited from recommending anything but love for stripey gophers because of course it is the University of Minnesota's mascot. <laughs> so I, I can only tell you to love them and to be happy that you have a, our mascot living in your property. <laughs> we also have pocket gophers. Right? So all of the other gophers, the ground squirrels I should say, uh, they make holes in the ground and they don't make much of a much of a pile of dirt if you will but pocket gophers are the ones that most people when they think of a gopher and they think of that big mound that five gallon bucket full of dirt that's that's uh, dumped on the ground and that's a pocket gopher and we have pretty much just one species of, of pocket gopher um, here in minnesota um, and they're called pocket gophers because if you roll them over you can see that that right here uh, right next to their mouth, they have little pockets in of, of skin, and that's a pocket where they put their groceries uh, as they're foraging, and then they carry them down to their burrow and, and uh, carry them to the brood level or to the, to the living chambers, essentially. And um, that pocket is so deep, it goes all the way back to the shoulder. And that's how they, they sort of essentially carry the groceries uh, back to their young, uh, and, and as well as put them in a place to store them for winter. The root crops are what pocket gophers love, uh, you know, uh, uh, carrots, uh, uh, certainly a potato. Um, you know, their natural food out in a, you know, out in a prairie system would be um, those big, thick roots um, from, from the forbs that are out in a, in a prairie system. Not, you know, grasses don't have a, a big, thick tap root, uh, but the forbs do, and that's what they'd be, that's what they would be targeting. If you have a problem with these guys, how do you catch them, or how do you, do, how do you discourage them from tearing up your whole garden. You, you know, my I've always I've always said that it's a it's a four-step program for pest vertebrate pest management uh, here in Minnesota. Uh, the, the first thing is can you change what you're doing to discourage the critter to be there? You know, if you can get them to just go someplace else, that solves your problem. Um, uh, the second one is repel them in some way, use a repellent. Exclude them is the third step. And then the fourth step, of course, is, uh, is, is, is direct management, you know, where you're capturing them, you're trapping them, you're, you're, you're doing something like that. Um, with pocket gophers, most people don't want to change their landscape. You know, a gardener who's got a beautiful, you know, well manicured landscape, they're not interested in doing that. Uh, they're not interested in planting things without big tap roots. So, so that's, that one's hard. Uh, you can't really exclude these guys because no one wants to bury a fence three or four feet down in the in the soil. Um, they don't repellents don't work, um, so it's about capturing them. And so, uh, uh, pocket gophers, the, the probably the easiest way to uh, to deal with them is in a, a sort of lethal sort of way. Uh, there there aren't many live traps available for pocket gophers. They do exist, but they're hard to to deal with. Um, so it's mostly uh, uh, kill trapping. <laughs>